ATAC fans, AJ here. In this video, I'm going to cover ADSB integration into ATAC. January 1st, 2020, ADSB became a requirement. ADSB stands for Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. All aircraft are required to have it, and it really benefited the public safety community that are using TAC. For years, ATAC had an independent plug-in that could bring in ADSB over an antenna and broadcast into your EAD, and then you could share that out over um, a TAC network that you had, either a flat network over, over through or through a server. Now we're bringing in not only this direct integration, we're also bringing in in the server from commercial enterprise. We're using ADSB Exchange here. They've been very generous in giving public safety an API key to bring in this um, this data. So you can see aircraft here. Here's a large air tanker, Tanker 107 flying. And I'm going to scroll down to a fire near the border of uh, Mexico, the United States, down near um, eastern San Diego County. This is the Valley Fire. You can see here with uh, this polygon and you can see a number of aircraft on here uh, you see these vlats a very large air tanker tanker 914 you've got the air attack from the forest service the lead planes the courtney aviation air air asset here and what we've done is through greg albrecht we're using a cop proxy where we're able to uh, take in the adsb information from adsb exchange and then change the call sign to what would be the radio call sign of the air tanker. So tanker 914 here. And then we're also bringing in um, some custom symbology. So you can see that we've got this tanker, as it says here in the cot icon, it's got this red um, line at the bottom, meaning that it is fire service. You can see over here, we've got a helicopter from SDG&E, Helitanker 729. Helitacker, Helitac 538 from the Cleveland National Forest. So it all the the dependencies on refresh rate are dependent on the you know the coverage in the area. Uh, in this area, we're getting a, a hit about every 10 seconds. You'll see the icons move. If you're in an area that has higher ADSB coverage, you'll get a, a much more um, frequent refresh rate. So if you're in an area that wants to use ADSB for better aircraft coverage, you can put up many of these receivers for under, uh, buy all the parts you need for under $200. You could deploy Greg Albrecht's code that's on Git and pump this into your TAC server. For a local deployment, you would have to use a, a receiver and you put it on your own flat network. Say you were to go out to an incident that didn't have great ADSB coverage, you can put this on, on your local network. So it's it's very um, flexible on, on how you want to do coverage. Again, with ADSB Exchange bringing over the internet, you can also you know bring in a receiver and add it to their network as well. So you you can have it that receiver as a local receiver for yourself and also pump it out to the internet, either directly into your TAC server and or into ADSB Exchange. What's great about um, the ADSB Exchange, if I tap on Tanker 914 here, I can see, I can lock on the aircraft here as it's going to move. And I can see, you know, there are 6,406 6, um, MSL. I can see how fast they're moving. If I use the Bloodhound tool, I can also get uh, an ETA. So if I had an aircraft that's returning to the fire, like Tanker 72 here, I could drop an icon on the fire. So let's go over to the GeoOps icon. And we'll put this little fire symbol. And I'm going to put it right in the middle of the fire. Its default location says fire location 7. I can name it something else if I want. But I'm done. I'm just going to leave it the default name. I hit the back button. Now I'm going to use the Bloodhound tool. And I want to say choose the target. So from this CAL FIRE tanker, tanker 7-2. to the fire and I can start it. And now I'm getting, based on their ADSB data, you know, what the ETA to the fire is. Right now, they're showing about three minutes and 30 seconds at their current speed, um, you know, the, the ETA for the aircraft. 
you could do multiple R&B lines as well to show um, aircraft. So I could stop doing the Bloodhound and just do R&B lines. And I'll show you how to do that as well. So if I grab my tools here, and I want to grab my range and bearing tools. And I could do a range and bearing from Tanker 7-2 to the fire location. And from here, I can turn on the Bloodhound. And now I've got an ETA for that aircraft. I can do range and bearing again from let's find another aircraft that's further away that may be returning to the scene. We'll do tanker 7-3 here. Let's do tanker 7-3 to the fire location. Turn on Bloodhound there. And now I've got, I can close out the RMB. And now I've got ETAs for multiple aircraft to the incident. Now, both of these are pretty close to incident. They're probably getting into orbit for a, for a tactical maneuver. But if you have aircraft that are coming from far away, let's say a search and rescue helicopter or one of these VLATs that's coming from out of state, you can get yourself you know, live ETAs. You can see as, as it gets into certain proximity, the ETA turns color, uh, turns red. You can see, I think, under a minute, it's turning red. So... Hopefully, um, this explanation of, of how um, using ADS-B is helpful. One last thing I want to show you. I want to turn off these R&B sources here. I want to show you how you get the vertical and horizontal separation. So since I have DTED level 2 installed, I have a graphical representation of the surface and now I can show both horizontal and vertical separation of aircraft which is another uh, very cool tool to do in TAC another cool tool for you to use if you want to kind of get a, a visual this way of all right you can see the Courtney Aviation Intel aircraft above the stack you can see all the helicopters down low and then you can see you know, the, the rest of your air tankers coming in and these VLATs out here and large air tankers and the air attack all, all separated both, you know, vertically and horizontal separation. Again, hopefully this was helpful in explaining how ADSB can use in TAC. Again, a shout out to, to Greg Albrecht. Um, his code is on Git that shows that uh, allows you to do this COP proxy and also Connor Spears for hosting this TAC server that we all enjoy. Thanks for watching.